<laughs> Hi, this is Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for watching my channel and my uh, my videos and supporting Gun Guy TV. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Gun Guy TV is available on a whole bunch of different platforms now, not just YouTube. So check us out in all those other places and make sure you subscribe or follow us in those places because that way if YouTube ever disappears, you'll find us everywhere else. So don't forget that. You can also support us easily, by the way, by uh, signing up on Patreon if you want to do that. There's a link in the description. Or if you like, you can simply use our Amazon link every time you purchase something at Amazon. It costs you absolutely nothing that way and you still support Gun Guy TV. Really would appreciate the help. Okay, I'm looking at my rifle here. Now this is an old 303 Enfield number 4 Mark 1. It's been sporterized, as you can see. And, you know, I've shot it a lot over the years and really enjoyed doing so. I've had buddies that have very similar rifles. In fact, some friends of mine have rifles that look almost identical to this one and have been sporterized in similar, similar fashion. You've probably seen them. So there's not a lot of collector's value to a rifle like this because the, the stock's already been chopped and, and everything else. However, as a functional rifle for certain things, they're really, really good. I'm, I'm a big guy, so I don't mind the weight. I actually like the weight of the rifle. And the 303 British cartridge is plenty powerful enough to take just about any kind of game in North America. So for me, it, it's got a hunting application to it. Now, as I've gotten older, I can't see that well, so I've had to take the iron sights off and replace them with an optic. And this optic was sent to me by Optics Planet uh, some time ago, and I put it on here. It's a sight track uh, scope, and I, I, I got to be honest with you, the more I use it, the more I really like it. If you'd like to know more about that, I'll put some information about that particular scope in the description. Unfortunately, with YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, I can't put the links to it on Optics Planet. Everywhere else I can, but not on YouTube. And if you are able to look at the links, you can certainly go to Optics Planet and order the scope. If you want to just do that generically, just use Gun Guy 5 as your code on everything you purchase at Optics Planet, and it'll save you some money. So regardless of what you're buying, you may want to do that. Now, I've had that on there for a while. I've shot the rifle with it quite a bit. I did a, you may have seen a video I did where I did a really kind of goofy cheek rest because getting your cheek weld up here high enough to use the scope with this type of stock is very tough. So I started shopping for a cheek rest. And there are, I don't know, a half a dozen or more options that were interesting to me. They were all, some of them were very inexpensive. Some of them were a little pricey. I would say this one, which is the Bradley cheek rest, was the most expensive that I looked at. Uh, and oddly enough, it's the one I ended up buying. They are not inexpensive. It's Kydex with a pad underneath. They're, they're kind of pricey, honestly. And then when I got it in the mail, I thought, wow, that's a lot of money to spend on that. And then I put it on the rifle. Now, I must tell you, I have shot the rifle and gone out and fired it at the range with this cheek rest a lot. I took it out here on my, uh, on my lead sled, and I, I put it there just to kind of sight it in because I hadn't really had an opportunity to sight in the scope properly, so I spent some time doing that. And then I shot it a whole bunch of different ways, and I just used the cheek rest. I shot it right hand, left hand, every way I could think of after I got it adjusted. Now, bottom line is this. I'm incredibly impressed with this cheek rest. It is by far the best rifle kind of aftermarket strap-on type cheek rest I've seen. Now, there were some other options where you had to modify the stock to attach them, and I just didn't want to do that because if I didn't like it, then I had drilled holes in the stock and like that. I wanted something that I could strap on. And this one came uh, with multiple straps, they actually sent me several different lengths of straps. So depending on the stock, it would I would be able to make it fit. And then once you strap it on and attach it, it kind of clamps down on the stock in, in such a way that it really just doesn't move. I mean, you can, I can mess with it, and I can't get it to move. There's a, uh, there's a padding underneath that goes the full width and the full length of its connection to the stock. And that padding is very robust, so that gives you a little bit of pad when your cheek is on it. And then this arc, this round part here, is... is high, the comb is high, but it's also wide enough that when you have your cheek up against it, it really it really sucks up any recoil or any jump the rifle does up against your cheek because it's nice and, and wide and it distributes that evenly across your cheek. So I find now, frankly, uh, that the 
the rifle feels like it's softer shooting than it was. It's, you know, I've never thought the 303 was a terribly violent shooting rifle. It never beat me up that badly. But of course, some people will complain about them because it's got the brass butt plate and, you know, it's an old military arm and they do smack you around a little bit. But honestly, with this cheek rest and the, and the cheek weld you're able to get with it, it feels like it's a softer shooting rifle. Now, one of the reasons I bought this is because it was the cheek rest I found that would adjust the highest. And after measuring the height I needed, I knew I was going to need every bit of height it would give me. And as, as you can see, I've got it adjusted all the way to the top. But it's, it's absolutely brilliant. And I'm very, very satisfied with it. I feel like I've got my, my rifle now set up for hunting season before hunting season shows up. Um, I'm, I've got a buddy I'm going to go hunt deer with. Uh, I plan for next year. And then I've got uh, another friend that wants to, take, wants to go hog hunting with me. I may not use this rifle for that. I might. I don't know. I've got a, a Remington 742 I might use for that. It just depends. But certainly this will take either one of those things without any problem at all. It's just having the semi-automatic for hogs might not be a bad idea. So I don't know. We'll see. But I, I feel like I'm getting it set up to go with the various things that I put on it. It hasn't cost me a whole lot. This, this scope is not terribly expensive. Now, truthfully, I didn't have to pay for it because Optics Planet sent it to me for T&E. But even if I had paid for it, it's not a terribly pricey item. Uh, but it's an outstanding scope. And the mount wasn't horribly pricey. They're not, really, for the, for the infields. This was fairly expensive for a cheek rest. But, boy, I think it'll last as long as a rifle does. And I really don't have to do anything else to it to make it functional for me with my vision deteriorating so that I can't really see both of the front and the rear sight very well, it, it really uh, set it up very cleanly for me. Now, if you have an infield, I got to tell you, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear now, okay? So you're not going to take a rifle that's a military grade rifle built for the war or wars, as long as these things have been around, that really was designed to, to be three or four MOA. You know, that was about it. You hit the, it meant to shoot people, bad, you know, the enemy, human beings, out to, you know, 300 yards or right around there. And that's about it. So, you know, they, they were really about an average of three or four minute of angle. So you're looking at 100 yards, you're going to get three and four inch groups average out of them, depending on the ammunition. And that puts you, you know, at, at six to eight inches at 200 yards. So you're looking at anywhere from here, you know, to there roughly at 200 yards. Well, you know, hunting accuracy, that's not too bad. I can, I can do that. Um, if I'm picky about the ammunition, I can get this one to shoot it just a, maybe around two, two and a half, two and three quarter MOA, which is not bad. So that gets me out to 200 yards, 250 yards max for hunting shots. Well, you know, that's as far as I want to walk to go get the game anyway. <laughs> so it works out for me. Now, if you're in a place where you need to shoot a lot farther, obviously, you don't want to use an old military surplus rifle for that. You want to use something that's going to give you a lot more accuracy. These things were combat accurate, these old, M these old uh, Lee Enfields. And the, the history proves that they were very effective as a military arm, extremely so. As a civilian hunting arm, they're not really designed for that, so you kind of have to tweak them. But I got to tell you, with the addition now of this Bradley cheek rest, I'm feeling really good about it. I, I, I'm going to shoot it some more um, this next week. I got to buy some more ammo for it. Uh, but I, I'm going to go out and shoot it some more. And then I'm going to start going through um, various hunting ammo that I, I think might be interesting and see which one it, the rifle likes the best. And once I get the ammo rifle combination figured out, then I think we're good to go. I may shoot a little bit more video on it when I get there. But if you're interested at all in a cheek rest for your rifle that you strap on rather than having to adjust uh, or rather physically attach it to the stock and screw holes in it and so on, boy, I got to tell you, I don't think I can more highly recommend this Bradley cheek rest. I, again, with YouTube, I can't put a link uh, in the description to their, their website. I want you to know I paid for it. They didn't send it to me. I, I, I bought it. This is something I bought. So when I'm telling you it's good, it's because it's really good. I'm, I'm real honest about my reviews anyway. You have no idea how many products I send back to people because I, I think they're trash and I can't review them. And there's a lot of them like that. So if, it, if it's on this channel, I like it. <laughs> if it isn't, well, that's because it was trash and I sent it back. Uh, this certainly is not. But I got to warn you, there, you, you know, your wallet's going to sting a little bit when you buy it, but you'll be happy that you did. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'm really grateful that you did. Have a wonderful week. 
Um, the election's coming up here in, I think, a week here, particularly in California, so you got to make sure you vote. Please do, and uh, look for the voting guides on, you know, Cal on CRPA and uh, California gun owners and, uh, and like that. They've got various different gun guides or, or um, voting guides that you can use. I don't have them, but if I can come up with links to them, I'll put them on our website, even if YouTube won't allow us to put them in the description. Now, if you're watching on something other than YouTube, the link should be in the description for these products and for the voting guides if I can find them. Again, have a great week. Thank you so much. Be safe.